What's up guys? Today we're doing interior work. Let's get this car upgraded. So like I said, today we're going to do interior work. By that I mean we are going to upgrade the steering wheel, do all the speakers through the car, add some sound editing, and then this will just be ready to get a nice detail. So, here's the steering wheel we are putting in. Um, I'm not exactly sure from which Toyota. It's usually a Celica or something like that. These are from, I'm not sure exactly which this one is from. This one does have the cruise control, just like the MR2 does. Um, to do these, this conversion, you do need to buy the sub harness. Here's the part number. You can get this off eBay. That's where I got this one. I think it was like 25 bucks or so. Um, there's the part number for you guys. You know, you guys can write it down or look it up or whatever. Um, you'll need a T30 bit, some trim removal tools. Um, you'll need a 19 mil socket. And that's that's for the steering wheel for the speakers we'll get into that when we get to it cool let's get this done all right so first thing you got to do unplug the battery i already did it last night so that gave the airbag enough time to just charge discharge and all that definitely want to do that whenever you're doing any airbag work or replacing anything electrically wiring whatever disconnect the battery if you have a radio code make sure you know it before you do disconnect it so First step to redo the steering wheel, you gotta pop this little cap off right here with the trim removal tool. There will be two T30 bolts on that side and two on the other side over there. Take those off, that releases the airbag, like so. so after you remove the airbag, unplug the airbag, unplug the cruise control stack if you have it. I think the ones that don't have cruise control, this won't be here. Before you undo this bolt, make sure your steering wheels are straight or the steering wheel. Yeah, make sure the steering wheel is straight, your wheels are straight. Get your 19 mil socket. Just take this off. You can use other tools, but I have the torque gun, so it makes it a lot easier. So don't take this off all the way. Get it to where it's, it's loose, but it's not all the way, because when you take this off, you don't want it to pop you in the face. So on some of these, um, I've already loosened this one, but on some of these, you'll need to kind of yank it back and forth, back and forth like that until it comes loose. Once it's loose, don't let it hit you in the face. And remember, keep it straight. Take this off. Put it aside and slowly pull this out. Get this out of here. This stays with it because obviously it's part of it. Put this aside. So that's it. Try not to move this around. Keep everything the way it is. This should be straight. There you go. These two arrows right here should be lined up. As you can see. All right, so now we got the new steering wheel. Remove the airbag. Depending on where you buy it, the T30 bolts might be in it, and they'll be right there and right there. Might be screwed in. So take those out. Take the airbag out. Take your new steering wheel. So this one has its own cruise control stack. This does fit to there. Pop this so the airbag wire through here. See how it moved? Just put it back. No big deal. Set it back, pull it through here. Make sure the steering wheel is straight. As straight as you can get it. It does have notches, so it's not like you can move it anywhere you want. It'll kind of sit. There you go. There you go. And you can check it. See, this one's too far. This is the one. Keeps the arrow in there straight. And uh, yeah, so you take your steering. Well, let's put the nut on first. We'll put this on. And uh, I'm not entirely sure what the torque specs are to this. I'll put it on screen once I find it, but let's tighten it down to six or seven Ugga Duggas. Done. That's not going anywhere. That's as tight as it needs to be. Take your cruise control stack, plug that in. So this, this is now where this comes in handy because the plug on the Celica wheel airbag is square one like that. And then the one on the MR2, it's a three, or no, it's a two plug, but it looks different. So I take this, plug it into here, click this, it keeps it held in place, like that. Take this one, and you just pop it in here, like so, done. Now, it sucks you have a little bit of extra wiring, but you can put that in there. Then I try just to set it to where it won't mess with the cruise control stack, which this is kind of a good spot over here. Like that, everything else is pretty flat. Set it in there, and that's pretty much it. Then you take your two T30 bolts, 
bolt them in there, and your steering wheel is done. Cruise control will work like it should. The horn will work like it should. We'll test all this stuff after I put the battery back, after we do the speakers and stuff. But that's it, that's all it takes. Super simple job, it takes minimal tools. Um, as long as you got a 19 mil for that big nut in the middle, T30 for the side bolts, that's pretty much it. A little screwdriver, trim removal tool, you're done. Looks great. And this steering wheel here has the red stitching. I'll, uh, we'll do some close-up shots here a little, a little later, but it has the red stitching so it matches the paint on the outside. Same with the shift knob leather boot. I'm not sure if this will stay or not. The owner will decide on that. But yeah, that's it. So we went from, from this ugly square steering wheel to the nice Celica one. I really do like the upgrade. It's super nice. It makes the car sportier. Looks sportier. It actually modernizes it. And uh, it just, I don't know, all around looks better and feels better. That's it. Super simple job. All right, so before, obviously before we can do any speaker upgrades, we gotta remove the door panels. Um, for this, it's simple. You need a flathead, a Phillips, and a trim removal tool. It's been a while since I've moved, removed one of these, but it's pretty simple. We'll kind of figure it out as, as I go because I don't remember exactly what's where. But it's it's simple. It's all common sense stuff, so. First, there's a little Phillips screw in here. Remove that. Try not to lose the screws, obviously. Remember where stuff goes. This is a super, I don't know if I can show you guys, but super tiny one, like that. So that one goes over there. Put that aside. Pop this panel off. Here, this corner, you pop it out, there's like a pin. Open this, slide it back, and that's it. So that's the little pin that I'm talking about. So it, there's a little thing over here, it goes over, it pops over. Well, you guys will see when we put it back in. So this is off. Now, there's a little, I believe it's another little Phillips right here. It has a little cap, one of these little caps. Take that off, right there. That's another Phillips or eight mil. That's one of these Phillips or eight mil, like that. Take that off, check if there's any bolts under here. I know there should be. Yep, there's one right there. So right in the center here, it's another one of those Phillips or 8 mil bolts or screws. Another one of these. That aside, another one right here. Same thing. Another one right here. Jeez, it's a lot. there you can use power tools on interior stuff like this but um, on older cars bolts and screws and tabs are brittle so I, I just recommend using hand tools it's just better that way this thing just pops up the handle like that it's just two little clips take that off remove that there's no screws in here or anything that just pops off so you can slide it off and this thing pop it off from this side first there's a tab here, and then slide it forward. Get that out. And then we'll just undo all these. You can't really mess these up, they only fit in one way. But pretty simple. Done. Put that aside. Um, pop this tweeter cap here. That just literally just pops right off. So now, no more screws anywhere. Now it's just clips. So you just start on. I like to start in these areas because you can actually stick your hand in here and then just kind of slowly take your time, don't go crazy, don't break everything. That's it, it's all loose, so now you just move it up, just wiggle it up, that's it. Undo this, the light, and that's it, door panel's off. These clips, we can take those off, put them back in here, simple as that. So no big deal, nothing too hard. Let's put this aside. So after the door panel is off, gotta remove the speaker. These are just... So to remove the speaker, remove these three Phillips screws.
Okay. Old nasty brittle speakers. I mean, they still work. They're not cracked or anything. Uh, that's not good. So yeah, they're done. They're shot. So now we'll just undo this little switch or plug. Again, I'm doing this one-handed because my other phone that I use to film just decided to crap out on me. Anyways. So remove that. Switch right there. It was plug. Why well, I keep saying switch? Remove that plug and the speaker is done. So these are the speakers that I am going with. They are Rockford Fosgates. Uh, let me see if I can get you guys the exact model number. The, right there, the R165X3, right there. So these actually already have tweeters in them, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, this is, you can tell. So what I need to do, and I'll be doing this off camera because I'm not a wiring guru or anything. See how these right here, one's thicker, one's thinner. Same thing here, here. So what I need to do, these are soldered onto here. I wanna keep this switch uh, connected over there. I don't want to have to solder over there. <clears throat> so I want to keep this switch. So I'm going to cut these off right here, solder these new ends, take it from the new wiring, solder these new ends onto there. And that way we'll be able to plug it in here, in and out, whenever you want. And we'll have a switch to plug it into the OEM one. So that way if anybody upgrades these down the road, it'll be a small little switch or plug and it'll be super easy to use. So I'm going to get that done off camera when we're done. We are going to fit up the new speakers. Here we'll put some sound deadening. The, what I want to do is put, I'm going to put sound deadening on this edge. So that way when it attaches to here, it's not just metal on metal. It'll be kind of nice sound deadener there. And it'll, just when it thumps, it'll, it'll thump a little better. You know, it's not going to, this is not no thousand watt sound system, but it's going to sound a lot better that way. All right, so as soon as I'm done making the plug for this, I'll get right back to you guys. See you soon. So this is the plug that I was talking about. So I soldered this, you know, I crimped them, soldered them, heat shrink, and then these, I crimped them, they kept coming out. So I said, screw it. I'm just gonna solder them on. And uh, I did test everything obviously before I did that. But anyway, so these are now solid. They ain't, they're not going anywhere. But you still got a nice plug. So if you wanna remove the speaker, you just unplug it. So to get this to obviously fit, it's a little wider, it's a little bigger. So what I did was I took this inner edge I kind of folded it in a little bit and now I put sound editor on the edge and that's what I was talking about earlier. We're not sounding the whole door, we're just doing the edge so when the speaker vibrates, beats, whatever, it's not metal on metal, you know. For example, listen to this. Now listen to this. See, and that's what makes the difference in these sound systems. Yes, you can go all out and completely sound deaden the front, the face of it, the inner skin the, or the outer skin of the door. You can go crazy with this stuff. but for this one, this is all we're doing. So I needed obviously a spacer to be able to put that speaker there. So I took this speaker cover that we had. We're not gonna be using this because obviously the door has its own, the door panel as you can see has its own cover right there. So I took the grill out, shaved off this little emblem here and now we're gonna use this as the spacer. So we're gonna put this in here like this and then that speaker goes onto it. Yes, it is a little bigger, um, the door panel will need to be trimmed on the inside a little bit, but I'll show you guys that, it's no big deal. Um, you pretty much have to do it every time you upgrade these speakers. But yeah, so the space is gonna go on here like that, like so, and then it's gonna go in there. I don't wanna ruin the speaker, so I'm not gonna do this, but yeah. So let me get all this put in, and uh, actually there's enough holes on this speaker to where they actually fit to the factory three holes. So that's actually pretty cool. So let me get all this put together, and then I'll show you guys the end result. One and second. just like that, the speaker is done and mounted. As you guys can see, I got it sitting perfect. You can tell by the, the word, obviously. Um, anyways, so I used these as the washers. These little, I don't know what you call it, C-clips maybe? Anyways, got the spacer back there, sitting well, flush. Um, so all we gotta do now is get the door panel ready for install. So on the door panel, the only thing we might have to trim I haven't tested it 100% yet, but what we might have to trim is this this edge right here. Usually a lot of people say you have to trim this out. So we'll see. I'm going to test fit it first, obviously, 
And if it fits, though, we're not trimming anything. Get it on. Sweet, so after test fitting the door panel, it actually fits perfect with no trimming needed at all. So that's actually best case scenario. So now it's just a reversal of removal. Let's install this door panel and finish this door up and then we can move on to the one of the back speakers. All right, so a whole day later, because I had to deal with a big wiring mess inside this door, every time you'd close the door, the speaker would turn off and on, and then the rubber grommet area, every time you pushed or moved around the wiring, you would do the same thing. So I knew there was a break in the wiring somewhere. At first, I thought the stereo just leads, you know, from the stereo to each of the speakers, so I was messing around there, removed the stereo. None of those wires were the same color as this. A few, but not the ones I needed. Then uh, with, Facebook, with help from Facebook groups and AMR2OC, they explained to me that it actually runs from there. It goes to the factory amp, which is back here. And then the wires run back to the door. So I had to figure out where the brake was. I ran a, two new wires and ground in a positive to that speaker and it's now ready to go. Made a mess in the meantime, but it is what it is. But anyway, so back here, I already removed these panels up here because I was messing around with the amp and wiring and stuff. So these are all gone. I took the seat out to give me more room. And this is the speaker that, this is the one we're taking out. And this is the one we're putting in. It's a four inch speaker and uh, it should fit pretty well. It might need a little bit of adjusting and stuff, but we'll get it to work. We'll make it look good and it's gonna sound great. All right, so there it is, it's mounted. Might not be everybody's way of mounting things, but sound deadening helps so it doesn't vibrate and move around. It's gonna sound great. I can't test the sound on YouTube because I can get copyright stuff, but you guys get the idea. Perfect. So now you just gotta put everything back, clean up the interior. And uh, yeah, the interior part of this whole restoration is pretty much done. After that, we've got the steering wheel did this speaker, did this one. I'm gonna do the other side off video because you guys get the idea, no, no reason doing it twice. All right, Whew, everything is done. So spe new speaker, new speaker, subwoofer speaker, new speaker, new speaker, all necessary sound ending around the speakers installed and done. So bye bye to these nasty, ripped, oh, ugly. Anyways, goodbye to those, steering wheels in. I wish I had one of those little rings, plastic rings that's actually supposed to be here that clips into here so it'd look like that, but maybe he'll get a new one. We'll get that figured out later. As you can see, made a little bit of a mess. Those are all the bolts and caps from the seats. So next thing we gotta do, we gotta detail this interior. Yes, I did remove that seat. It's easier to just get back there. And it's super simple. The four bolts and one nut that holds the seat belt thing right here. Anyways, don't lose those bolts when you're doing this. But yeah, we got to get this cleaned up, detailed, all the leather, plastics, 
carpet. We're gonna put some uh, carpet cleaners on there and scrub it down a little bit, get it smelling nice. We'll uh, clean all the plastics around here and the interior part is done. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm sorry if this video is a little long. It's somewhat informative, somewhat DIY, but not really, you know, it's just you guys are following me along for this whole procedure that we're doing to this interior. And um, I'm gonna end the video here because if I do detailing stuff on this video, it's just gonna be too long. Um, so the next video will be detailing it and cleaning the carpets, scrubbing them down a little bit, cleaning all the dashboard, uh, plastics, leather, the seats, conditioning them with leather conditioner, cleaner and conditioner, all that. We'll get all that done and then I will show you guys how the sound system sounds. We'll, uh, we'll find some non-copyright music. We'll play it a little bit and uh, I've already tested it, of course, because I did the work, but it sounds freaking awesome. Like, um, you know, the only thing letting it down now is honestly the head unit, the head unit. Um, but you know, if the owner wants to replace the stereo later on, he can do that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy this video and the series on this MR2. We're getting close to being done. There's not much left. I just looked at my list. There's not much left to do. So handing it back to the owner. Then we'll be moving on to other things. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys on the next one.